I'm here today with porn star, director, producer, CEO, writer, activist, Michael Lucas, and most interestingly, I think, a mm -hmm. uh, documentary maker. I just finished watching your new documentary. What is it? The Campaign of Hate, Russia and Gay Propaganda. And it's a beautifully made documentary. Completely compelling. I love Camilla. I love the drag queen. She was mm -hmm. she was fascinating to me. She's amazing. She she is very articulate and she's so real. Nineteen and years old and 19 so years smart. Old, so smart, so desperate, and yet so have such great spirits. She lives in the this drag queen lives in a small tiny city two hours away. She every day she's going to Moscow two hours there, and she's saying that this is the most dangerous, is to get out of the house get on the train and make it to Moscow. Once I'm in Moscow, she said, I feel much better already. The most dangerous thing that is happening is not that gay people which cannot speak uh, you know, openly in the press and have to, you know, it cannot express their opinions. That's what the law did. It's against propaganda of homosexuality, which is very broad. You don't know what it is. It's dangerous oh. to be publicly uh, out on TV and people were losing their jobs. What's the most dangerous though, it's kind of sig giving a signal to the mob, to Russian mob, to, to that, that it's okay yeah. to, to beat them up, to physically abuse them, to humiliate them. And there are lots of people, young teenagers that have no work, they're full of hate, they have lots of time, and they're frustrated, uh, no jobs, so they uh, pretend they, as they are gay people on social networks, on Grindr, on uh, dating sites. And then once a gay man is caught in this situation when they think it's a guy who wants to hook up with him, he comes to the apartment and there are 10 guys waiting for him and they humiliate him, they spit on him, they make him pose with dildos and then they put it on the web and they make him introduce himself. They, he has to say his first name, his last name, where he studied, where he lives, uh, names of relatives, all of that. And, it and then his destroys life. his life completely. And they are not arrested. They have all the freedoms. Nobody is after them. And that's the most dangerous thing because mob is very dangerous. And gay people you've seen in the movie, they meet on the public squares. And yet they're being beaten on the public squares because Russians would not even stop. They don't know why people are fighting. And uh, there were scenes there, did, like if you watch carefully, you will see they are beating up the poor like t teenager. They drag him through the grass and people are passing by, you know, uh, that, that's, and they don't know it's, they're beating a gay person, but they just in general don't not going to care get about that there is a one human being, that human being is being tortured uh, and beaten up by a group of people. And that is what, that's one of the reasons why I don't even want, I don't want to go there. How did you find gays in Russia? Well, I'm from there originally. I, I was growing up there, unfortunately, because it's not the best place to grow up. I'm Jewish and I'm gay and it was very difficult on both accounts. But I know a lot of people, you know, I speak Russian right. language, obviously. So when you do, it's much easier. I always think that when you go to places, mm -hmm. that people everywhere are basically good. Mm -hmm. And that if you just talk to someone, that they're going to respond to you and they're going to like mm -hmm. you and they're going to... And that's not really the mm -hmm. case in Russia, no. where you, you're talking to people and they just cut you down and they don't like gays and they're not going to like gays and that's the end of it. People are friendly in many places, like Middle East. Or in the Middle East, Muslims are very friendly, Arabs are very friendly. but you cannot talk about certain things. You cannot talk about America. You definitely mm. cannot talk about, uh, you know, about what we believe in and about our freedoms. We cannot talk about gays. In Russia, the situation is not that horrible, uh, but it's pretty bad. They do not want to kill you for being homosexual for the most part, the society itself. But it's always about protecting their children from homosexuals. This is constantly being discussed in Russian media and on the very negative angle. And that made people 
very vocally homophobic. In the documentary, you show uh, some YouTube videos of people getting fag bashed and harassed right. and everything like that. And it seems that that it's fostering this this uh, yeah. sort of feeling of right. violence that's right. that's building. And in fact, at one point, someone says that they think in ten years it's going to be worse. I decided to show the com gay community in all this complexity because there are so many different opinions. Some of them are thinking that it's good for for their visibility and for discussion. I think they're terribly wrong because this is not a good discussion. This is one-sided discussion. This is anti-gay propaganda. And yes, it's going to be worse. Russia, pe Russian people are in general are very dark. Mm -hmm. They are quite cruel and they don't like anything different. Like if you go to Russia, people just don't smile. And if you look at them, they are not smiling back, but they actually will ask you, what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> well, why are you looking you? at me? Yeah. No, it's not even what's wrong with you. It's like, why are you fucking looking at me? You know, it's, it's in a very aggressive way. They also hate the West, particularly now they hate the United States because they have ambitions of a superpower and they failed several times. There is nothing that we can do. Whenever I show this documentary and during film festivals, then... People say, what can we do what to can help? We do? Yeah. And unfortunately, my answer is, is nothing you can do. Because why Kremlin didn't become homophobic overnight. It was a planned campaign to take away attention uh, uh, of the society from the domestic problems and find some enemy. Homosexuals are being... Uh, viewed as an agents of the West and whenever uh, that, that are there to destroy the society. When we go on demonstrations, and I'm guilty, I went myself several times for, for demonstration in front of the Russian embassy, run, uh, Russian consulate, then it was always shown on Russian TV and they would always concentrate on drag queens or people in leather and they will say, look, they it's are so trying beautiful. to tell us what to do. And then there is more hate towards uh, LGBT people because they are viewed as an agents of the West and that the West is behind them and trying to push Western values on Russian Orthodox Christian society. And so I tell people, there's nothing you can do, but it's okay. I, you know, they ask me, why did you produce this movie, movie then if we cannot do anything? And I said, well, because maybe you will be, it's a knowledge and you should be aware and you should appreciate what you have. You should appreciate that you can fight for your rights. And in Russia, you can't. There's the scene with the teachers, and mm -hmm. the teachers are, are some of the most infuriating homophobes. That, that they, they aren't yes. willing to, to help the, ki the kids, who, the gay kids. And let me tell you something. These are not the worst teachers. These are the only teachers that I found that they were open-minded enough to actually talk to me. Mm -hmm. So, no. So they were the best the, of. <laughs> yes, they did. And they were just in, well, oh, you've seen infuriating. People in, well, you, did you see people in the streets? You know, I wish I would have teachers like that, actually, in my school, because they were much worse towards me being Jewish. And, you know, they all, obviously, they felt that I'm different. And they were bullying me, not just children. But the teachers. teachers. Was there any baggage that your porn career, I mean, mm. did people know about the porn? Yes, and that was a plus because gay people a... know me in Russia. Oh. I am in some book that is the most famous 30 Russians, uh, in, uh, and I am with quite good names like Tchaikovsky, composer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Dostoevsky, yeah. Michael Lucas. <laughs> uh, right. Dostoevsky wasn't gay, but Tchaikovsky was uh -huh. you know, composer. So I have the bad book. But this book came, of course, Many years ago, during Perestroika, during Yeltsin time, when for seven years, I think, uh, it, it was admiration towards the West, communism, communism just failed, and new things were coming. But then it all, went, once Putin came to power, it all was done and finished. That's what's fascinating to me, is that there was that period in the 90s where everything was just, it, everything had opened up and it was just new, and yes. everybody was very open to these new ideas, right. and you had these sudden Russian billionaires, right. and you know, capitalism was flourishing right. and everything, and then it just took a sudden right turn. Yes. It makes me wonder, can that happen anywhere? Can that happen in America? If no. The, no. No, 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 no. And that's why a lot of people, when I go with lectures, when I go with film festivals and then do Q&A, people ask me, well, but this is exactly like America in the 70s. You know, this is exactly how, no. The thing is, yes, America went through a difficult, but difficult time, but America was going 
forward, always forward. Sometimes it was ugly and difficult, but America, because of American laws, because America lived by constitution and is governed by laws, we can fight for our freedoms. And we successfully did so and win it through changing people's mind and through courts. In Russia, people cannot fight because, there are no, because of the laws that are all created in order to make people not be able to fight and not be able to change. Not that they want to, but it's not even a starter because there are no opportunities like this. And so I, I always answer it's very different because Russia is going backwards. Yeah. While America is going moving forward with all the Western world, a lot of countries, Russia included, and Russia and Middle East, all these countries are either stuck back in time, like Middle Eastern countries are stuck in medieval centuries, or Russia that was, you know, maybe some were thinking that it was moving in the right direction, but a lot of people I did know that it's a very short period of time. You, you know, it takes forever to change people's mentality, and when there are no, uh, no tools for that, no laws, then it's basically becoming impossible. You know, people are saying there's something about Russian soul and they're romanticizing that. I don't know if there's anything good there, really. <laughs> I, I lived through that. You said that uh, it's coming out on Netflix on mm -hmm. April 1st? It will be on Netflix on April 1st. It is available on iTunes. It is available now on DVDs. But, uh, of course, it's the easiest way, I think, today in today's world to, to get it from my, through iTunes. Yes. Really fascinating stuff. I think everybody needs to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.